uh, hi all i see a few familiar faces from last time and uh, i am neha this is shubham i have some members from keploy team at the back so uh, lovely to meet you uh, today i'm going to talk about uh, you know how we can auto generate end to end test cases and especially you know mocks and stubs uh, which are pain uh, but before that uh, have anybody used or heard about keploy here uh, we all are in the indian open source ecosystem anyone okay i see a couple of hands uh, so that's great i'll just walk you through uh, you know what made us uh, come to keploy and why we felt the need um, and how is it going from you know last year now uh, so how many of uh, you are developers here and you know write test cases for back end services <laughs> okay i see majority of hands that's cool um so i'm sure you will be able to relate to this story where you know when we um uh, have a feature developed and you know we test it with our prepared test data or mocks um and you know we are happy because everything works fine and as soon as we give it to qa or you know if there the qa doesn't exist the application application faces production there are some challenges right does anybody relate to this yeah cool uh so you know why it happens is uh because we test for doctor strange love uh and the qa may be tested for doctor strange light but in production our application faces doctor strange <laughs> right so uh the data is not that realistic when we are locally testing our application or building our application uh so what do we do about it that's a problem uh but before that i want to understand um, how many of you have written unit test cases here anybody majority hands very cool how about integration or end to end test case a few hands um so the number decreased because it makes sense uh to write integration or end to end functional test case uh you need a lot of time which maj majority of us doesn't have because the sprint cycle is like 15 days um and you know uh, we don't get time to test uh on the integration front but only with unit test case or a few integration test case we don't want to end up in situation like this right so uh, you don't want uh, pieces of your code individually working so uh, definitely there is a value that integration or end to end test case comes with but since we don't have timelines we are not able to write those uh, so now we have chat gpt or github copilot uh does anybody uh use that for or even tried to create test case here okay i see couple of hands uh does anybody want to talk about it how was the experience i really want to discuss this and make it a conversation uh you raise hand uh so were you able to create a complete end to end or a unit test case Uh, so the so copilot seems to be like like uh, to be able to do a lot of like uh, the introspection about your co uh, code base so by like uh, like i guess a uh, looking at the like the code <coughs> itself that like yeah. it can generate the correct unit test i haven't tried it with end to end test yet okay anybody else who wants to speak about his experience uh how was chat gpt or copilot uh there was a couple of people yeah there is one at the back yeah sure yeah so for me it has been like sort of hit and miss so when you're like okay so when you're dealing with like uh, generating test for like general language things it works pretty well but let's say you're generating test case for like a framework like let's say spring boot or something like that i have seen like sometimes it has issues understanding that stuff yeah that's true there's one guy who want to talk at back 
Actually, I can answer this from automation uh, testing point of view. Sure. Uh, if service is very generic, like if you want to generate test case for a very generic uh, service like authentication and authorization, it will create a good uh, quality of test cases. Mm -hmm. But if you have a service which is very specific to your company or domain, which is not very actually common, that uh, then it might not be very uh, beneficial. Mm -hmm. So yep. it was my observation. Yes, that's true. That's what I also say, uh, saw. Uh, if your service is very, uh, you know, simple and generic in the terms, it's, you know, very small service, it's fine. But um, when we are working for big organizations, we have complex microservices. Uh, we see that with ChatGPT or GitHub Copilot, um, we think we would be able to easily write those test cases, but when you actually deep dive, uh, it doesn't have the whole application context. You can give it a certain number of lines. Um, for big application, it doesn't work. Um, so I have also seen that, you know, with chat GPT, it might give you, uh, you know, a test script. With Copilot, it might give you a pseudocode type of thing where the whole script is not executable at once. You have to look at it and modify it according to your real use case. Uh, I've also seen that with ChatGPT, uh, you know, you will not be able to get uh, mocks or the test data as realistic as to what your application would see it in production, right? So there are some limited challenges. Um, so to reverse that pyramid that I just showed, uh, there are two key challenges, right? That one, we need to have something that can get us uh, realistic data mocks. And second, we need to have something that can reduce the effort to write end-to-end -end test cases to uh, ideally zero, right? Uh, Auto-generate them. Uh, that's when we came up with Kiploy. Uh, that's when Kiploy comes into picture. The idea is very simple. You record the test cases just from the production itself. I'm not saying test in production, but test like you are testing in production. Uh, record the, uh, so what Kiploy does is it records the, cap uh, the network calls uh, between your application and the dependencies. So dependencies could be um, you know, databases uh, like MongoDB, Postgres, or it could be uh, an, any other service like uh, Twilio, uh, Stripe, any other payment service. So once all that network interaction is captured, it converts those to uh, YAML test cases and mocks. So these are realistic. And then replay it in your local environment. So if you are done with development while uh, making a PR, you can just have it integrated in your CI CD or you can even run the test locally uh, before pushing the code so that you know and understand that uh, you know my integration and end-to-end -end test cases works. Uh, something that works with production is going to work with my local uh, newly developed tests, and I have not introduced any regression. So uh, that's how we do record replay. Uh, for some familiar faces uh, from last year, so, uh, what we have changed is earlier we used to have an SDK and you know users had to integrate the SDK wrap their dependencies. There was code change, but uh, we came up with uh, this new codeless integration approach where you know uh, which we built with eBPF tech. So you don't have to uh, make any code changes now. Uh, we just capture all the calls at network level. Uh, we also created the auto generation test cases, uh, which was you know high in demand. That uh, if I have an open AB API schema, can you please just generate the all possible test scenarios and bombard it to my application? Uh, that's but in alpha now. Uh, we also worked on capturing it directly from production. So earlier, Kiploy used to capture uh, the API calls happening to your application locally. Maybe you're doing it from Postman, Hopscotch, or you're making a curl, or on pre-prod environments. But now uh, we have worked so that you can directly capture test cases from production. But now you might think that uh, if I'm capturing all the API calls as test cases 
from production, there will be thousands, right? So for some users, uh, it is like 1,000 QPS. Uh, so we worked on a deduplication algorithm, which will just eliminate the duplicate test cases and find which ones are the best, uh, with the best test code coverage uh, by looking at the individual test code path uh, for your application. So that's what we worked on. I'll uh, uh, not go into the demo because uh, my team is presenting the demo in the unconference today, but I will quickly show you a video of how the auto generation of test cases and duplication of uh, removal of the test cases work. So this is my sample application, which is in written in Java, and there is a schema JSON. Uh, this is an open API schema. Um, so I think multiple of us has that. Uh, so I just run the application after starting Kiploy, and what Kiploy will do is it will create several thousand test cases just for, uh, just by looking at the API schema and considering all possible scenarios for all fields. You can see there are mocks and test cases generated, right? Uh, now I'll just uh, deduplicate those test cases and remove those uh, which are duplicate. And once those are removed, um, so these were the test cases that were all. Uh, these are the test cases which are left. So these test cases uh, are the only ones which are which can be used for your application uh, as in uh, need attention, right? So if I introduce any uh, bug or any change, for example, you can see here I changed the name, uh, first name from Mike to uh, an empty field. Uh, it highlighted that when I retested it. Uh, so I kept the demo quick because it was a very short time and quick chat, but happy to take your questions in the unconference or outside. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, that's what I wanted to discuss today. Um, happy to take any questions you may have right now. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> that's a very popular question. Uh, we basically uh, have a fake certificate issued locally. Uh, Shubham, uh, do you want to answer because you implemented it? Yeah. So we actually use two approaches. In one, like Nia said, we have the fake certificate, which we um, you know, add to the uh, trust store, and the application trusts it. The other approach, uh, which is more secure because this may not be very suitable in production, is we uh, use uprobes in EPBF, which allows us to intercept the actual SSL libraries call. So when the application would uh, try to read the um, you know, unencrypted data, uh, via the SSL library, we would intercept that particular method and then use that. So yeah. Yeah. Any other question? No, I think we're good. Uh, Actually, okay, thank I, you. I myself had a question. Yeah, sure. So I use this similar a lot. So basically, how do you remove PII because you're pushing production data on local? Also, a secondary question would be. Like your local does not have the same data on the database side, right? You you also have to replicate that somehow. Like, is that part of your automation, or is that expected that local will have some similar stuff or something? Yes, uh, very good question. So, we do for for the second one, we do generate uh, the data mock and capture that so that you don't have to set up the database locally. So that is also replayed along with the test case or the scenario API input and output. Uh, locally, right? So that's one. And what was the first question? The PII part of yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, so around the PII, uh, we do get a, that a lot. Uh, so what we do is we encrypt uh, the sensitive fields. We take that in a con as part of our configuration that, for example, credit card numbers or things like that. Uh, you can encrypt those, and the decryption keys only lies with the you know admin or with Keploy. Uh, depending upon you know how do you want to role base it, yeah. Um, any other question? Yeah. 
Uh, I understood that there is a way to generate test cases by uh, running or configuring Keploy in production. But what if I'm writing a new application? That's what is the other way to generate test cases that I only have in my mind or that's from a production requirement? Yeah, I mean, uh, for the first time, if it's a new application, uh, you do have to spin up a database. Uh, there, the only value would be that you don't have to write those test cases. Uh, Keploy can only think of all the scenarios according to your API schema. Uh, but if you want the data to be as realistic as production, then you have to capture from that uh, environment. Okay, uh, I think we are out of time. Uh, so I'm happy to take any questions outside. And uh, thank you so much for coming and giving me the time. Thanks.